Today's discussion will be presented in three sections since we're recording it for radio broadcast on the Federal News Radio 1500 AM. You're welcome to post questions and comments during the session and we'll try to answer them online. I'd like to introduce our moderator, Tom Temin, host and managing editor of the Federal Drive on Federal News Radio. Welcome and thanks for joining us. Our guests today are Michael Hogan, Standards Liaison in the Information Technology Laboratory at the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Dean Salalis is Chief Technology Advisor to the Principal Deputy Director of National Intelligence in the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. Dr. Karma Sawyer is Program Manager for Emerging Technologies in the Building Technologies Office at the Energy Department. Douglas Terrier is acting chief technologist at NASA, and Larry Tellman is vice president of innovation at Jacobs Aerospace, Technology, Environment, and Nuclear. Great to have you all, really great crowd we have here today. And we're gonna be talking about the Internet of Things, digital strategies for agencies, and really these affect network architectures, cloud, mobility, but we're also gonna talk about the human aspect of it, the training, cultural aspects, so that agencies are equipped to deal with these types of technologies, and we'll get to that later in the discussion. But why don't we start with Douglas Terrier at NASA. Give us a sense of, you know, and I don't know where you begin with NASA, but give us a sense of the digital strategy and how you plan to use which even for NASA, th the amounts of data coming in are ever growing because of the higher resolution of everything you launch. Yeah, it's great to be with you this morning. Um, so first of all, we're, as you know, been at this business of space exploration for over 60 years. And when we look at the challenge ahead of us in the coming decades, we are gonna be employing all the digital te transformational technologies that we can to enable us to overcome those challenges. Uh, one of which, of course, is the I Internet of Things. And um, we have strategies to deploy that across our enterprise and all of our operations terrestrially. But maybe something that's a little unusual relative to some of my colleagues is that we have essentially an internet in space where we're operating all of the nodes on various planets and then our various space assets. And we currently have that internet up and operational and growing. And um, we consider that as an opportunity to deploy sort of an internet of things in space as we look at automating and um, optimizing the control and, and operation of those assets as well. It's too bad we just can't overcome the speed of light, then things would really be That's great. That's right. But I wanted to ask you too, does this also apply to some of the more mundane assembly and test operations and Absolutely. so forth that happen right here on Earth? Absolutely. In fact, my office is right now um, undertaking a study, of what we call the Digital Transformation Study, to look at how we can apply digital technologies across all ranges of our operations in the design, development, and test of our systems, as well as in operations um, across the various operational centers, the launch facilities, and, uh, and, and mission control facilities. And as you can imagine, the amount of data that we're dealing with, data coming from those operation facilities, as well as the data we're manipulating coming down from our various assets on orbit um, and in space, is uh, growing exponentially. And to really understand how to, to analyze and incorporate that into our decision making is a, a tremendous challenge for us. And then in just the infrastructure and operating the mundane things of, of the, the physical footprint of our various 10 centers around the, the, the country, we're deploying as much as possible uh, smart devices, smart controllers, to make sure we have maximum efficiency in operating those sure. systems. And we should point out, you just helped NOAA get their latest GO satellite right. to headed right. to a geostationary the... orbit in a few months, and uh, we'll be good to go on that one. All right. Uh, Dean Salelis of ODNI, again, vast, you probably can't tell us about half of them, but what, to the extent that you can, what is the IOT and what's the data strategy at the Office of the Director of National Intelligence? Sure, Th thank you for, uh, for having me today. Um, so in the intelligence community, we always start and we end with mission, right? So the mission of the intelligence community is to make uh, this vast amount of data in the world understandable and to provide actionable insight on foreign intelligence threats to our national leaders, right? So in a world with potentially a trillion internet connected devices, in a world where um, Already, we've seen attacks from things like the Mirai botnet last year, which turned our webcams and mm -hmm. security cameras against us. Um, uh, the foreign threat is real, right? And the foreign adversary is listening. And I like to say that when your internet connected light bulb can listen to your conversation, you have a problem, right? So that's kind of the, the that's kind of the plate that the. Uh, intelligence community has served uh, on, on top of it. And so this expon exponential growth in data means we've got to have new ways of looking at the data. We cannot hire ourselves out of this problem. Uh, Director NGA 
recently said that by 2031, you know, he, he'd need some millions of analysts to look at the overhead imagery of, of the world. And so that's just the, in, that's just the data we intentionally connect, collect. If you think about the, the vast amount of open source information that's just being generated by the world and our collective ability to understand it is challenged. So we need to have new, da new data strategies. Now the, the intelligence community has for a number of years been investing in cloud technology. Um, um, we had a program that um, um, many people have heard of, the uh, Information Technology Enterprise, the ICITE or ICITE. Mm -hmm. um, that was about investing in cloud technology and big data analytics. Uh, in investing in STEM and our workforce. So you got to look at kind of across all of those um, uh, planks to kind of figure out where the strategy is going. So we have a all of community strategy for um, you know digital innovation and embracing the digital world. Okay, and we'll have to get into some of the details of how you even encompass all this data from a physical storage standpoint, because that does affect the ability to use it. Let's move on to the energy department, Dr. Karma Sawyer. Uh, you're in the buildings area which is a huge IOT and big data field really now. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely 100% uh, true. And so I, I really want to thank you for inviting me today. This is a great opportunity to talk about the Internet of Things as it relates to buildings and building energy efficiency. So um, I think it's important to really try to understand the, the scale of this issue when you start thinking about data. So every hour, more than 200,000 new devices get connected to the internet globally. Um, and the US market for that is the biggest by a factor of four. It's increasing by 20% annually or more. And an awful lot of those connected devices, those new connected devices are in buildings. So in the energy department, we're not trying to get our arms around every one of those connected devices. We're not necessarily that concerned about a internet connected doorbell. It doesn't have that big of an impact on energy. We're doing research to understand energy opportunities related to these internet connected devices. How do they enable consumers and buildings to provide services to the electric grid? Um, how do they allow us to reduce uh, peak demand at times of stress for the electricity grid so that we have a more reliable energy infrastructure? Um, what are the energy and the cost savings that are available because of these internet connected devices? How do they impact end users? How do they impact the larger electric system and how do they benefit our country? So when you think about this, this data problem, it really becomes a challenge of scale. So we already hear with our partners in the private sector and federal agencies that have so many buildings that the sheer volume of data makes it not manageable. So as we start thinking about new sensors, collecting more data, your reference to light bulbs was fantastic. We have a very active space called Connected Lighting. We have a new Connected Lighting Lab in Pacific Northwest National Labs. Lights aren't just light bulbs anymore. They're sensors. They're things that communicate to building energy management systems. Those then communicate to the electricity grid. And so it becomes a ton of data collected by, again, 200,000 new devices every hour globally. So we have to think about research opportunities to aggregate that data in a meaningful way. We have to think about what data is meaningful of that. How do we sift through it? Um, how do we utilize it with advanced control platforms that are cost effective for buildings to implement? So it's a, it's a really rich opportunity from a research perspective, um, but you know it's something you have to uh, go into with your eyes open on terms of the, the scale. Interesting. Wow. So a lot to talk about. And uh, Michael Hogan at NIST, you've always, your organization, I guess you too, have always been good at being just a step ahead of what federal agencies and really industry needs in terms of best practices, standards, and so forth. And there's something just out on all of this big data. Right. So NIST has in its name standards, and, and it's the measurement standards and documentary standards. Uh, uh, and, and so we're the nation's metrology lab for measurement science, but the documentary standard side is important too. As a, a Boeing uh, standards executive commented, an airplane is hundreds of standards flying in very close formation. And when I use that attribution in a presentation, the audience gets agitated because they, they say, surely that person meant thousands. So, well, you know, so an airplane or a complex device like that is the implementation of hundreds or thousands of documentary and measurement standards. So, uh, last summer, uh, an interagency group uh, that NIST is convening uh, to worry about, coordinate on cybersecurity standards, 
decided of all the things we should be looking into with our finite resources, what, what should we be looking in first? And uh, the answer was Internet of Things. So we dived in last summer in an interagency way to see what we knew as agencies about the state of cybersecurity standards for the Internet of Things. And that culminated with a, a Valentine's Day release of our draft report where we hope to get a lot of public comments to help augment what we thought we knew and get a better handle on, on what is the state. And, and basically the state is there's hundreds of standards out there that are germane to the Internet of Things for cybersecurity. And, uh, and uh, some of them are well implemented and some of them are not well implemented. So you, you need to have technically sound standards and then you need to have the market uptake of the technically sound standards. So it's going to be a continuing work in progress with all the innovation, but the threat surface w of the Internet of Things being connected is, is magnifying, you know, we have to protect everything of the billions of things and, uh, and somewhere in that uh, decision process is what set of standards are we going to use? Uh, require that the, the vendors and the consumers follow certain standards. So this draft is out now and it's open for comment? Uh, open for 60 day comment period. I think it ends April 18th. Okay, so plenty of time to get in on that. And I want to continue with the discussion of digital strategy and I think a better way to talk about this than digital strategy, which is kind of a vague word, is I think what the successive administrations have meant and what successive congresses have meant when they're asking agencies to do this is really new applications, both for internal use and for deploying to the public, because all of our agencies in some way, even, even, the, uh, even the intelligence community, has some public-facing uh, applications that it has, that it, that it deploys. So maybe we could talk about what the digital strategy is and try to bring it down to the application level, either imagined or in the works right now. We can go back to you, uh, Douglas. Yeah, so NASA is, um, as I said, employing digital uh, technologies across the spectrum of our operation. And our strategy, long term, is to really deploy those as quickly as and as efficiently as we can as we understand the implications of those. Of course, the challenge with that is, you know, has been mentioned, we're, 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 you know, we're looking at potentially having up to 50 billion devices connected on the Internet of Things by by 2020. So that's a staggering amount of data, staggering amount of information to manage. We consider our network of, of things both on uh, here on Earth and in space as a part of that. And in order to have that connectivity so we can make that data, first of all, translate what is an enormous amount of data into information and then into sort of decision aids is a, itself a challenge that we're working through using a lot of artificial and intelligence uh, techniques and so on, data mining, et cetera. And then to make that available to the public through the various devices that are connected um, in the public sphere. And we've got to understand all of the um, security implications of that, the vulnerabilities of that, because after all, uh, I think that's the number one challenge is um, ensuring that we have integrity and, and safety of operations in our case, while having maximum access in that Internet of Things. Um, uh, kind of the end state you could imagine is where we've got a rover on Mars and, um, you know, uh, a, a, the public could have access to that data as it's, it's coming off and have the ability to interact with that device. You can imagine students being able to drive a rover on the moon uh, using their iPhones, for example, as, as they would interact with other things on their internet so um, com. Maybe interact with a virtual version and not really touch the actual one. So we've got to understand what that interface is. The ideal would be to be able to have a, a you know some kind of buffer between those, right? So we have a strong firewall between what is the public facing, which we kind of do on our internet today is how we manage a lot of that the data that we do provide to the public. But to have that same interface with our, our devices that are connected. Okay, and uh, Dean, you said you can't hire your way out, you know, of all of the possible uses of this data because it's so vast. So that, again, gets to how can you augment people's work with applications? What are some of the things you're thinking of under that digital strategy umbrella? Oh, yeah, it's really, it's really broad. Um, and again, if you get back to where we start with the mission of the, of the intelligence community, trying to understand the world, you can imagine that every technology that is used in the private sector has some analog in the, in, in the intelligence community. We need identity. We need to understand who the identities of people uh, traversing our systems are, both their digital identities and their actual identities. We need to know who the people are that are uh, trying to practice foreign influence uh, uh, campaigns against us or who are taking cyber attacks. We need to understand their methods and how they operate. Um, 
and there are consequences across all the big IC missions, including the cyber mission, which you know is kind of obvious, right? Because cyber and um, the vast amounts of cyber data that is produced is a key component of this conversation, but also things like who are the actors and agents working on weapons of mass destruction across the world? Um, how are the terrorists using these technologies to, um, um, in, a, in a way that threatens us, right? And how do we counter those things? Uh, counterintelligence, foreign denial and deception and influence campaigns, and transnational organized crime. So no small plate of potential applications for these technologies broadly across the, across the intelligence community. Okay, and before we get to the break, we'll go to Dr. Karma Sawyer. Uh, what can you see this Internet of Things data producing in terms of applications that could help, say, a federal real estate manager? Yeah, I, th this is a, a great question. So when we started looking into this space, uh, the first thing we did was really try to understand the energy impact for these type of new technologies, these suite of technologies, and building controls was where we started. So we undertook a study last year in partnership with Pacific Northwest National Lab to really get some numbers behind this. And what we found was um, there is the potential to eliminate 30% of energy consumption from commercial buildings just by deploying existing sensors and controls technologies in buildings. This is both from basic technologies and kind of the more um, advanced ones that are on the market. This includes reducing peak load at times of stress by 10 to 20 percent and it equates to 4 to 5 percent of national energy savings just from technologies that are not currently implemented in only commercial buildings. That doesn't even touch our homes. Only commercial buildings. And so this helps us at least for me, really understand the problem. If we already have these technologies, we've already said that this is, a, this is not something that's going to happen. This is something that is happening. And it still hasn't been broadly implemented in the private commercial building sector, not to mention the federal building sector. Um, so how are we going to look forward looking at a research portfolio to think about how can we develop new technologies that won't meet that same fate? So in the Building Technologies Office, we are developing a strategy called Grid Interactive Efficient Buildings that are tr is trying to really come up with this cohesive strategy for developing new Internet of Things and digital strategies that will um, take advantage of where the market is, um, but help not repeat the mistakes that have already been made that have really um, caused us to not be able to take full advantage of this opportunity. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there. We're going to take a quick break because I want to return to this, but we do need to take a break. I'm your moderator, Tom Temin. This panel discussion is the Digital Revolution Workforce Impact, sponsored by Jacobs, here on Federal News Radio 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com.